We have arrived. The final chapter of A Christmas Carol audio drama is here. Stave 5 of A Christmas Carol. Uh, what a good way to wrap things up right before Christmas. Just perfect timing. Uh, it's almost like we planned it that way. Thank you guys so much for listening. I really hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, I would love to hear from you. I tell you, there's nothing that makes my day more. And anybody who has contacted me knows this, that it makes my day so much if you actually get in touch with me and tell me what you think about the podcast. So you can do that and all the social media links are down in the show notes. So you can go to anotherworldaudiobooks.com. All the ways to get in touch are there. Uh, yeah, I just... Uh, another huge thank you, a huge shout out to all the amazing voice actors who made this possible. There's so many of them, over 20 voice actors that came together and volunteered their time and put all this effort and time into doing this project. Um, I did like a kind of back of the envelope calculation and I'm figuring we're probably at least 80 to 100 hours <clears throat> of work between all, all of us into this, uh, between the editing and the recording and re-recording and uh, just all the stuff that went into producing this. Uh, it was just a monumental effort, but all these amazing people came together and made it happen and I cannot thank them enough. Make sure to check them out. You can check out the cast interviews we've been posting uh, to get an idea of all the amazing people who have been part of this. Get to know all of them just a little bit better. Uh, such uh, So many amazing people, so a huge shout out, huge thank you to them. Also a huge thank you to all the patrons who make this podcast possible. Mike, Corky, Aaron, and Etiosa, thank you for supporting the show. And I, I mentioned this in the last episode, but want to make sure that everybody knows the, the Patreon uh, which had kind of gone by the wayside, is back and, and full-fledged. So if you uh, pledge uh, to um, support the podcast through Patreon, there's a whole bunch of really cool benefits. There's there's stickers, t-shirts, hoodies, uh, you know, free audiobooks, all this amazing stuff. So make sure to go ahead and, and check that out. You can do that um, in the show notes down below, or you can go to anotherworldaudiobooks.com. And if you haven't gone ahead and donated to Operation Christmas Child, now is the perfect time. We are just about to Christmas, and there's no better time than now to just support this wonderful organization that is doing so much to bring the gospel and bring Christmas to kids in need around the world. So go ahead and go to Operation Christmas Child's website and donate. And if you do that, just go ahead and send me an email with your receipt of your donation to anotherworldaudiobooks at gmail.com and I will get you a free version of the full audiobook of A Christmas Carol uh, audio drama. So go ahead and do that um, and uh, just as a thank you for donating to Operation Christmas Child and supporting that wonderful organization. That's, that's uh, just my way to say thank you for doing that for um yeah it is just so cool to see uh if you don't follow them on social media i highly recommend you check it out they have a lot of cool videos and stuff but just the impact that they're having and it's so much fun to watch so all right we've made it now without further ado i give you stave five of a christmas carol yes and the bedpost was his own the bed was his own the room was his own. Best and happiest of all, the time before him was his own, to make amends in. I will live in the past, the present, and the future. The spirits of all three shall strive within me. Oh, Jacob Marley, God, heaven, and the Christmas time be praised for this. I say it on my knees, on my knees. They are not torn down. They are not torn down, rings and all. They are here. I am here. The shadows of the things that would have been may be dispelled. They will be. I know they will. <laughs> oh, I don't know what to do. I'm as light as a feather. I'm as happy as an angel. I'm as merry as a schoolboy. I'm as giddy as a drunken man. A Merry Christmas to everybody. A Happy New Year to all the world. <laughs> There's the saucepan that the gruel was in. There's the door by which the ghost of Jacob Marley entered. There's the corner where the ghost of Christmas present sat. There's the window where I saw the wandering spirits. It's all right. It's all true. It all happened. I don't know what day of month it is. I don't know how long I've been among the spirits. I don't know anything. I'm quite a baby. Never mind. I don't care. I'd rather be a baby. <laughs> What's today? Eh? What's today, my fine fellow? Today? Why Christmas Day? It's Christmas Day! I haven't missed it. The spirits have done it all in one night. They can do anything they like. Of course they can. Of course they can. Hello, my fine fellow. Yeah? Do you know the porterers in the next street but one at the corner? I should hope I did. 
an intelligent boy, a remarkable boy. Do you know whether they've sold the prize turkey that was hanging up there? Not the little prize turkey, the big one. What? The one as big as me? Oh, what a delightful boy. It's a pleasure to talk to him. Yes, my buck. It's hanging there now. Is it? Go and buy it. Are you kidding me? No, no, I am in earnest. Go and buy it and tell them to bring it here that I may give them the direction where to take it. Come back with the man and I'll give you a shilling. Come back with him in less than five minutes and I'll give you half a crown. Yes, sir. I'll send it to Bob Cratchits. He shan't know who sends it. It's twice the size of Tiny Tim. Joe Miller never made such a joke as sending it to Bob's will be. The hand in which he wrote the address was not a steady one, but write it he did, somehow, and went downstairs to open the street door, ready for the coming of the poterer's man. As he stood there, waiting his arrival, the knocker caught his eye. I shall love it as long as I live. I scarcely ever looked at it before. What an honest expression it has on its face. It's a wonderful knocker. Here's the turkey. Hello, how are you? Merry Christmas! Why, it's impossible to carry that to Camden Town. You must have a cab. <laughs> the chuckle with which he said this, and the chuckle with which he paid for the turkey, and the chuckle with which he paid for the cab, and the chuckle with which he recompensed the boy, were only to be exceeded by the chuckle with which he sat down breathless in his chair again and chuckled till he cried. Shaving was not an easy task, for his hand continued to shake very much, and shaving requires attention, even when you don't dance while you're at it. But if he had cut the end of his nose off, he would have put a piece of sticking plaster over it and been quite satisfied. He dressed himself all in his best, and at last he got out into the streets. The people were by this time pouring forth, as he had seen them with the ghost of Christmas present, and walking with his hands behind him, Scrooge regarded everyone with a delighted smile. He looked so irresistibly pleasant, in a word, that three or four good-humoured fellows said, Good morning, sir, and Merry Christmas to you. And Scrooge said often afterwards that of all the blithe sounds he had ever heard, those were the blithest in his ears. He had not gone far when, coming on towards him, he beheld the portly gentleman, who had walked into his counting house the day before and said, Scrooge and Marley's, I believe. It sent a pang across his heart to think how this old gentleman would look upon him when they met, but he knew what path lay straight before him, and he took it. My dear sir, how do you do? I hope you succeeded yesterday. It was very kind of you. A Merry Christmas to you, sir. Mr. Scrooge? Yes, that is my name, and I fear it may not be pleasant to you. Allow me to ask your pardon, and will you have the goodness to accept my... Oh, Lord, bless me! My dear Mr. Scrooge, are you serious? If you please, not a farthing less. A great many back payments are included in it, I assure you. Will you do me that favour? Uh, my, my dear sir, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know what to say to such munificence. Don't say anything, please. Come and see me. Will you come and see me? <laughs> we will. Thank you. I am much obliged to you. I thank you fifty times. Bless you. He went to church and walked about the streets and watched the people hurrying to and fro and patted children on the head and questioned beggars and looked down into the kitchens of houses and up to the windows and found that everything could yield him pleasure. He had never dreamed that any walk, that anything, could give him so much happiness. In the afternoon, he turned his steps towards his nephew's house. He passed the door a dozen times before he had the courage to go up and knock. But he made a dash and did it. Is your master at home, my dear? Oh, yes, sir. Where is he, my love? He's in the dining room, sir, along with mistress. I'll show you upstairs, if you please. Thank you. He knows me. I'll go in here, my dear. He turned it gently and sidled his face in round the door. They were looking at the table, which was spread out in great array. For these young housekeepers are always nervous on such points, and like to see that everything is right. Fred! Why, bless my soul! Who's that? It's I, your Uncle Scrooge. I've come to dinner. Will you let me in, Fred? 
Let him in. It is a mercy he didn't shake his arm off. He was at home in five minutes. Nothing could be heartier. His niece looked just the same. So did Topper when he came. So did the plump sister when she came. So did everyone when they came. Wonderful party. Wonderful games. Wonderful unity. Wonderful happiness. But he was early at the office the next morning. Oh, he was early there. If he could only be there first and catch Bob Cratchit coming late, that was the thing that he had set his heart upon. And he did it. Yes, he did. The clock struck nine. No Bob. A quarter past. No Bob. He was full eighteen minutes and a half behind his time. Scrooge sat with his door wide open that he might see him come into the tank. His hat was off before he opened the door, his comforter too. He was on his stool in a jiffy, driving away with his pen as if he had been trying to overtake nine o'clock. Hello. What do you mean by coming here at this time of day? I'm very sorry, sir. I am behind my time. You are? Yes, I think you are. Step this way, if you please. It's only once a year, sir. It shall not be repeated. I was making rather merry yesterday, sir. Now, I'll tell you what, my friend. I am not going to stand this sort of thing any longer. And therefore... And therefore, I'm about to raise your salary. I... I... Mr Scrooge, I... Sir, I... A Merry Christmas, Bob! A merrier Christmas, Bob, my good fellow, than I have given you for many a year. I'll raise your salary and endeavour to assist your struggling family, and we will discuss your affairs this very afternoon over a Christmas bowl of smoking Bishop Bob. Make up the fires and buy another coal scuttle before you dot another eye, Bob Cratchit. Scrooge was better than his word. He did it all and infinitely more. And to Tiny Tim, who did not die, he was a second father. He became as good a friend, as good a master, and as good a man as the good old city knew. Or any other good old city, town, or borough in the good old world. Some people laughed to see the alteration in him, but he let them laugh, and little heeded them, for he was wise enough to know that nothing ever happened on this globe for good, at which some people did not have their fill of laughter in the outset. And knowing that such as these would be blind anyway, he thought it quite as well that they should wrinkle up their eyes in grins, as have the malady in less attractive forms. His own heart laughed, and that was quite enough for him. He had no further intercourse with spirits, but lived upon the total abstinence principle ever afterwards. And it was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well if any man alive possessed the knowledge. May that be truly said of all of us. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, everyone. God bless us, everyone. Ah, I love this book so much, and this audio drama just brought it to life in a whole new way. Uh, I'm so, so proud of the uh, creation that we have created here with The Christmas Carol. I hope you have enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed putting it together for you. Again, this was all in uh, benefit of Operation Christmas Child. All proceeds from the sale of the full audiobook, uh, audio drama, go to Operation Christmas Child. So make sure that you go and uh, either purchase the audiobook once it's live, or if you want to pre-order it, you can go to Operation Christmas Child's website and donate, and then send me an email with the, the receipt of your donation to another world audiobooks at gmail.com and i will put you on the list and get you that free full version of this audio drama once it is ready so that's kind of the the way we do it around here because i i want to provide free audiobooks because i know a lot of people you know you can't afford them so that's kind of the whole um point here is to provide them for you but if you have you know just a couple bucks that you want to throw to operation christmas child and help some kids around the world my way of saying thank you is providing the the full unabridged version of a christmas carol audio drama as we draw near to the end of this year, um, I just want to take a, a moment here and just say a huge special thank you to every single person who's listened. It is so cool to see the Another World Audiobooks family growing. Um, it's just so awesome to just know that we're, we're connecting with people all around the world who just love audiobooks and, and love these stories. It's been a blast and I'm just so happy to have you along for the ride. 
Um, so, I, yeah, I think we'll go ahead and wrap things up here for today. Um, hopefully get you back to your family, hopefully a warm fire, some great food, and celebrating this wonderful holiday. Christmas is pretty awesome, isn't it? It's probably one of my favorite seasons. Growing up, um, we had a nativity scene that me and my siblings loved to set up every year. There was Mary and Joseph, the shepherds, and little baby Jesus in his manger cradle. And when, when you think about it, the, the story of Jesus, it's, it's one of the greatest stories ever told. Over 2,000 years after he was born, people are still talking about him. The world still stops on this day to remember and celebrate his birth. So this Christmas, enjoy the presents, the time off from work, enjoy the family and the lights, but don't forget the real reason we celebrate this holiday. Jesus Christ came to earth to live a sinless, perfect life so that he could take the punishment for our sins on himself and offer you and me eternal life with him in heaven. Now, that's something we're celebrating. I want to read you something from the best book ever. For we were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating others. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. From everyone here at Another World Audiobooks, I just want to say, Merry Christmas. Thank you for listening to A Christmas Carol, an audio drama, a production of Another World Audiobooks, a project in benefit of Operation Christmas Child. The incredible voice actors that you heard throughout this production graciously volunteered their time and talent. In no particular order, Liesel Hall as Martha Cratchit, Roy Clark as the Ghost of Christmas Future, the Undertaker and Business Person 2, Sam Collins as Scrooge and Young Scrooge, Laura Robbins as the Door Girl, Young Cratchit Number 2 and Tiny Tim, Rebecca Hunt as Belle and Mrs. Cratchit, Carl Nordman as Jacob Marley, Second Merchant and Mr. Poole, Shelley Moore as Young Caroler, Alex Legacy as Old Joe and the Debtor. Romy Santosh as Fred's wife. Jane Wing as the Charwoman. Thomas Riser as Nephew Fred and Fezziwig. Amanda Bourne as Caroline. Jordan Semro as Belle's husband and third merchant. Len Clark as Mrs. Dilber, Young Cratchit Number 1, and Peter Cratchit. Beth Highland as the plump sister. Melissa Fry as Fan and the boy on the street. Harry Jeppard as the ghost of Christmas Present and Business Person 1. Jared Byron Green as the great fat merchant and topper. Dylan M. Clark as Mr. Walpole. Nikki Brown as the Ghost of Christmas Past, and Jazz Wilson as Bob Cratchit. And me, Brady Smith, as your narrator, or Charles Dickens, whichever you prefer. For more free awesome audiobooks, go to anotherworldaudiobooks.com, or simply search Another World Audiobooks on your favorite podcast player. We're also on YouTube, just search Another World Audiobooks. A Merry Christmas to you and your family. May the light of Jesus' love fill your heart and transform your life. Thank you for listening. This has been a production of Another World Audiobooks. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.
When I was in school, I absolutely hated writing. It wasn't until I was a bit older that I came to understand the power of words. If you're a business owner, you understand that power too. A business blog, when done right, can drive sales, increase revenue, and get you more customers. But as a business owner, you probably don't have the time to do all that writing. Plus, if you're not a copywriter by trade, you might feel like you're just kind of throwing words out there and they're not actually accomplishing anything. The good news is, there's a simple solution. Check it out. I call it the ultimate blog post checklist for businesses with online stores. This checklist will allow you to write better, more effective articles that convert readers into buyers. It's full of easy to follow examples to get your creativity flowing based on experience of nearly a million words written. And best of all, it's effective on any type of article in any industry or niche. I've successfully used this exact checklist on topics from pool table reviews to investment advice. Tired of spending tons of time writing stuff that doesn't convert? This checklist will change that by giving you highly effective blog posts and articles that transform readers into paying customers. Go to invicta.enterprises slash free checklist and start saving time and transforming your writing now. That's invicta.enterprises slash free checklist.